Well, hey, welcome to the Talls and Mac podcast. We got my man Dustin Hicks, flagger extraordinaire, <laughs> on today. Brandon, what do you know about this guy? Man, Dustin Hicks, what can I say? He's been my buddy for, I don't know what, probably too eight, long. Eight, nine years now. I don't know. Some, I met him over there at Jason Williams. He was yeah. cowboying for him, and uh, we've just been homies. Yeah. Yep. And uh, sneak off every once in a while to go yeah. do things we ain't supposed to. Yeah. We uh, Jason would like to go down south, you know, see his house down there. And mm-hmm. Dustin was supposed to be irrigating. We might have been at the at the local cantina, you know. And Jason More than called, once. Don't be taking him drunk. Guys. <laughs> you guys work. We are working. So we well, got somebody doing it. I got him out of a couple pickles. <laughs> well, it takes a while to irrigate. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Jason didn't s- no. sit there and watch the water run down the uh, water. I guarantee Brandon, that. I'd have to. I was supposed to irrigate all day, and Brandon called me in the morning. What are you doing? Just got done with chores, bud. What are you doing? Well, you want to go uh, have some lunch? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. I got to irrigate, though. Don't worry, I'll see one of my guys over there. <laughs> Either way, as long as it got yeah. done, right? There's yeah, many ways to skin a cat. That's yeah, very true. It, it we're, like, we're gonna have one beer. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's so it. we we uh we uh showed up to the survey. Jason was on the rope at the survey, and I was supposed to be there irrigating. Me and Grant, Brandon come pulling in, ice chest full of beer. What the hell are you doing? We haven't taken care of it at home. Everything's good. Everything's good. <laughs> I mean, as long as it's still getting irrigated, right? Yeah, Jason couldn't, he wouldn't get too mad at me, so I would always yeah. smooth it over for he, you. He took care of it for me. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. So what are you up to now, man? What have you been up to? What have you been doing? Uh, just just working a regular job. And Where do you work your regular job? What do you do? Uh, I sell automotive batteries. Automotive Mason, batteries. Yeah, and uh, like some opens and help so, them out a little bit. So let's go back. Uh, you hung out quite a bit out there in Oklahoma, right? Yeah. In yeah. which uh, Sean... Sean Crater. Sean Crater, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's how you got to know, you know, like, is that your start, like, in kind of the Western world? Or yeah, for the, open? for the most part. Like, when I graduated high school out here, I moved to Oklahoma. Where'd you graduate from? Chavez. Orderly, yes, right say. Orderly. But uh, I moved out there with this old man that I knew. He was just a horse trader. Him and my grandpa's buddies, they trade horses together. And I worked for him for a couple of years, and I ended up meeting a guy named J.D. Bacon. Ropes real good. I started hanging out with him. And him and JD was roping the, or rodeoing together, so I started working for Sean. That's how I got to meet him. It, he's a horseshoer. We sold pipe for like pipe fences and stuff, and uh, we decided to get us some roping steers and produce our own ropings. And that's when I kind of started flagging. We had the steers, so I started flagging, and we didn't have nobody else. Oh, we're in Oklahoma. Uh huh. Yeah. And then, so did you move back to Arizona after that? Or yeah, I was over there for I guess like eight or nine years, and then I moved back. And down there at the saloon that Jason's dad owns, I met Kine and Bry. Yeah. Got talking about couple, roping. A couple pillars in the community. Yeah. yeah. And, and shout out to Bry. Yeah. I, I, we didn't realize he, he was, was like the 2094. Ni- or I'm sorry, 1994 PRCA Rookie of the Year. Rookie. Did of you know year? he was Rookie of the Year? No, I did not know that. I was that's, a fan, though. That's a pretty. hell of a. That dude's a stud. You know? Yeah. Yeah, early no, early down, 90s, man. Wow. Those, they were pretty good, huh? That's that's natural talent that guy comes right walking with his limp and will stick bones. Yeah, oh, he'll okay. stick bones, <laughs> yeah. and he'll heal them down too. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean we've had Matt Sherwood here, and he's I mean a lot of even Larry D. Guy talked about Kyan. I mean he was pretty pretty famous person. Some of brothers, some yeah. of those guys that we talk about, you know, some of the most famous guys to us to never go anywhere. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Sure. Like you know those those okay. guys, if they would have had the right backing or maybe the right sponsorship, like some of them guys do now, yeah. they'd been winning the world. It's not only here that people know about them. Like when I was living in Oklahoma, me and Kyle went back there and bought some horses and stuff, and like everybody there knew exactly who he was. Yeah, and he's just a cool dude too. Oh, yeah. Like to hang out with Kyle, he's just a cool guy, man. Yeah. He's I, up there in uh, Colorado with the work with Ross right now, and he's doing real good. He's He's doing good. Yeah. So you come, you met Kine and Bry at the saloon. Yeah, yeah. And then me and Kine, we decided we would go on a little adventure and buy some horses. And then uh, we ended up over at Jason's. Mm-hmm. And then me and Jason became really, really tight. With Jason Williams. Williams, Jason Williams. Oh, sorry. We, we became really tight. Turtle. <laughs> and, uh, man, I uh, just started working for him. Uh, we bought a bunch of steers and started taking them to jackpots and stuff. And I was just hauling them. I was just driving a truck, hauling them for him. Then it got to where, I, like, he would have ropings or you would have ropings, and I'd flag all them for you guys. And then it got to where I'm there. I might as well just flag their ropings. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how it all got started. So how long How long do you think you've been flagging ropings for to today? Uh, 
probably about 10, 12 years, probably. So you're pretty, you're pretty solid on flagging. I mean, I like to think so. A lot of people don't, though. <laughs> I should think so. I mean, I think you're always fair. Depends I mean, on who you ask if I flag them out or not. Well, that's true. But <laughs> sometimes even those guys that get flagged out, I mean, they, I mean, hey, yeah, they, yeah. they got to know. Yeah. And I, I, you know, not just flagging out. I mean, you're, you're, you're not trying to ruin their day. You're just trying to show them what's what's illegal and what's not. Because if they if they don't if you let it pass and they go and they're up for maybe yeah. some more money at a different open and yeah. it's a bigger circumstance, they'll know what you know the feel is or what it should yeah. be or not. Yeah, that's the hard part. Like I tried it. Like especially sometimes I'll let it like slide because like most of their opens I flag are all lower number opens. So like I kind like but I try to explain to them like don't do that again and. Tell yeah. them why, or if they get flagged out, I try to explain to them why. But some of these guys are hard to explain it to because they yeah. think they know <laughs> and can't tell them nothing. Caesar, what do you think about, you know, I guess like if a flagger, say he's not numbered as high as, as you or, or, you know what I mean? Like, is that, is there some animosity there? Or, or you know, like some, like, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, intimidation? Kind of like you know, is 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 there like you know something like that going on? You know, I I'm pretty pretty fair with the flaggers, but you know I'd like to see maybe a Dustin flag an, an NFR or something like that. Mm -hmm. This guy, you know, he he ropes well in his own right. Mm -hmm. You know, he he's crossfired some steers in his time. He knows For what sure. what the crossfire rule is, and he's constantly seeing thousands of teams throughout the week flagging. Yeah. So. If you take a guy like that to an NFR situation and the call is made, hey, it's a crossfire. I guarantee a lot of them guys are gonna ride out of the arena because you know this this guy knows. Yeah. He understands. He's he's mm -hmm. you know he, he's done it before. So, mm -hmm. and I think the animosity to some of these pro level guys is is the flaggers never even roped before. Yeah. <laughs> they've never they've never they don't know how to swing a rope. They yeah. never even rode a horse before. Hardly some of them guys. So. How, how do they know what a crossfire is? Yeah, if they're and, rough stock people. Right, and, right. Yeah. So that that's – I'd like to see when, when, I, when I'm when i healing and you go to these ropings out here and you see guys like, like Dustin and stuff and they will call you out for a crossfire, you know, like it, mm -hmm. uh, – you can you can ride out of the arena and be like, all right, you know, I did kind of tee off right there. It was a, a little quick, and it might have yeah. looked like a little fast. And and guys like Dustin will will give the tie to the runner a lot of times. Mm -hmm. If it's close, it looks close. Yeah. Man, uh, the good flaggers, my personal opinion on the flaggers, they'll, they'll go ahead and give the tie yeah, to the runner. Yeah. Um, if it's blatant crossfire, it's like, man, that was bad, yeah. dude. Yeah. Like like that was obvious. They're gonna flag you out. Yeah. And and I'm gonna be like, you know what, Dustin knows. Mm -hmm. You know that's. I'd like to see that a little bit more in the PRCA, and I, I don't know. Um, we we had Eric Rogers in a little while ago, and we talked about the PRCA flag uh, crossfire rule. W what is your opinion? I mean, as as a as a flagger that does this weekly, and you see some bad calls by the judges, it's like, come on, guys! It's it's if you do your homework and you kind of been around it, it's not that hard of a call, you know? Yeah, and it seems like because like they don't get theirself in good enough position, and they're. And they're basing it off the horse's position, not the steer, and when they're releasing their rope. Exactly. Like, you see so many of them. What was it last year? Was it uh, Jake Long that got flagged out at the NFR? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah last yeah, year. And it, it was, that was, I thought that was terrible. To, to be honest, I think uh, Jake might have cut it down there a soon, sooner on this, the run before. Yeah, and now that, that would have been like if you'd have called that one out for a crossfire, but exactly. like that, man, that was pretty close. You know yeah, what I mean? But the exactly. one before, it's like the steer rolled to the left and kind of followed the header, yeah. but there's no corner. Yeah. And so, and and I think you're right, exactly. I think the the, the flagger's in a bad spot yeah, in the arena. Yeah, because he can't really see everything develop right there. Right. He just sees the horse's position at the end. And going this is my that. opinion. It Say at the NFR, if the the uh, judge was uh, the, one of the flaggers was over there to the left side, say the healer side at the yep. back end of the arena where the where run was up coming to you. Yep. They very rarely run them steers to that corner of no. the arena, anyways. No. And it, and it, I, I feel if I, I my personal opinion that, that you can see the the hit, you can see the corner a lot easier than you can from behind the healer where the flagger has to stand. Yeah, because like right there, every, you can see everything open up and develop. You can see exactly what's going on. Like I don't. I'm with you. I don't know why they don't switch it where they're back there. Uh, or at least, like, I don't know. Like, because cause all them other guys could, like, have a say in it. Like, them right. other judges right there, and they don't pay no attention. Right. And I just think that they're just in a tough spot to, to see the shot. And sometimes a horse will block the shot, and they can't really see what the steer doing. It looks, exactly. like, it looks like it's fast, so they're going to 
You and get that, like a horse that, that cuts in just a touch right there. Well, they, how are they going to see that sitting yeah, right by the exactly. hillside? Exactly. Yeah. And it's just going to be like, well, it, it looked like it was quick, so we're going to call you out. Instead of yeah. giving the tie to the runner, it's like, hey, no. Well, it, and, as, and as much as the rounds are paying now, like you're costing a guy. Well, that's um, like they yeah. live for that my, right there. My personal opinion, I would like to see a, a gentleman like yourself yeah. flag the NFR. And just, the, I mean, just in the team roping. I mean, you know enough about the calf roping as well. Like you can flag the calf roping. Yeah, it just, it's, it's, it's a, I think they need tiny event judges and a, a couple, at least knowledgeable tiny event judges yeah. because most of them are really, really knowledgeable on, on the bronc riding side of it and the bull riding side of yeah. it. And it's very... It goes over their head a lot of times with the yeah, crossfire yeah. rules and stuff they like that. They just go what they were, because they have to go like their class. They're yeah. just going off what they tell them. But like, what you see, it's a whole different deal. Yeah, Rogers explained to, because he talked about the seminar they go to. They were they were saying the crossfire rule is the steer has to hit and then start taking his jump forward for them to get, for, for them to be legal. I'm like, man, what about how Harry? That's Eric's, fourth place. He rolls yeah. them exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. because before that, we had talked a little bit about Eric and Eric saying, man, nowadays these headers are really trying to set that healer up where he they're almost gathering the back feet of that steer up perfect yeah. for the perfect shot. But in that perfect shot, that's where they're going to call him on the crossfire. Yeah. There's not really it's, a corner. It's a yeah. slippery yeah. slope yeah, right there. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> yeah. And I've seen you flag you know, people out, and, and then you, they write up and they, you tell them, you're like, hey, we're the number eight roping, you know, just take one more, you know, like, why are you even, just why are you, catch. yeah, why are you even put yourself in this yeah. spot, you know, you just cost you, and they'll do it in the short round. Oh, yeah, every mean? time. And, it's like, why are you even put yourself in this yeah. spot? You're like, and they get, then, then I mean? get yeah. my attitude for it. Well, it's just, that, <laughs> that's, it's a, it's a, it really is a tough job. I mean, oh, you see, see officials in, in every sport, and it, it, it really is a tough yeah. job, but it's important to get the, try to get the right call. Yeah, yeah because for sure. Especially rodeo. There's I mean, so it's, much money. That's that's their life. Yeah, yeah. and it, it could be making the finals, and, and their Messing livelihood it. is making the finals. Yeah. It's, it's, well, yeah, we talked. Nobody about, makes a living without making the finals. In the, we talked yeah. about Ellensburg and that big thing that um, Eric was telling us about with uh, Wesley Thorpe and oh, Cody yeah, yeah. Snow. You know, I mean, that was a crossfire that stopped them from going, and hey. everybody got fined. And just you yeah. know, hey, that. Junior Junior Zambrano, like I, uh, you know, kind of mentored him last year, and he called me. Uh, or I called him and I said, "Hey, how'd you do?" I don't know. I don't think they're gonna have team rope. And then he said, "Hey, it's the crossfire herd around the world. <laughs> it, this thing is going around like everybody. Like I, I was in Montana. Like I, I hadn't rode in a couple of years, and I heard about it. You know, <laughs> yeah. he said it's the crossfire herd around the world. And sure yeah. enough, it's it's, it's been, everywhere. That's a it's but like that's a wildfire a, now. That's a good point. I mean, the wrong call can cost yeah. these guys, and not only cost them." money they're going to make at the nfr but cost them when they go to sit down with their sponsors next year you yeah. know everything yeah. all down and they, didn't, and they didn't make the finals you yeah. know in in 2021 yeah, or whatever yeah. it was you know they didn't make the finals i i got a question for you dustin i you know you've been flagging for 10 years you've been out here a lot you're friends with all of us man how how was that to flag out your buddy Flag my, I'll flag Jason. Jason Williams <laughs> is like my I'll best friend. Him. And I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't flag. It don't matter if it's you, Caesar, Brandon, Jason. It don't, or somebody I don't know. Like, same way for everybody. And, it don't matter and who that, it and is. That has, but that has to be hard, I guess. Is oh, what yeah, because be Jason, right? Jason's the first one that'll come back and oh, shoot my ass you. about it. And, yeah. and I've told him, I'm, you're going to have to flag me out this one. Oh, yeah. no, don't, don't, no, yeah. no, you're going to have to flag me out. Brandon's like, I'm going this one. I'm, <laughs> That's I'm what we need flaggers to be like, to be honest right. with you, because we need somebody that can, t hey, what did you see? Yeah. Like, what yeah. Did, yeah. So I won't do that again. Yeah. And you walk up to a pro rodeo judge and you ask them, they they take a chance of getting fined for this just And Dustin cool enough guy you know like even after the rodeo he'd be like okay this is what i saw you know like this and that and, and, and he can figure it out but these judges don't even want to explain it like it's hard well, to, is it is it because they don't want to explain it or maybe because they don't know they don't know and they might have been wrong and they're gonna get they their ass want, chewed exactly. you know what i mean like you're so, beauty about you man you've been around <laughs> enough guys you've had your ass chewed plenty so you take it really oh, really good dude, right? I, I'm so used to getting asked. Maybe, maybe like, a world champion ass. I mean, like I'm telling you, like yeah. I've seen Jason and get after you a few times, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it, it's funny. No, not but, me. I didn't. Really no, know. not Brandon. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a, a two hundred and fifty dollars seminar in two weeks, and then they kind of travel around yeah. with an old bull rider. Yeah, I, I, that's nowhere compares to a guy like you. And and we're not just just saying you. There's 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 other flags. Oh yeah, out there's there a lot of them that flag a lot of team mm -hmm. opens, but. That makes no sense to me that the the guy flagging the team roping 
used to be a bull rider or yeah. that that's yeah. rough stock side, mm-hmm. you know, not or like never wrote before. Yeah, never wrote like before. Caesar was saying, yeah, like they, they don't it's, even. It's a, and I like we're in the mecca of. Yes. You know, especially in the winter time right. yeah, during yeah. NFR season, like it's roping all over the place. There's so many really good flaggers in this area that, yeah. like, why can't we get one? Of, I I told Dustin, man, cool. why why couldn't we get him to flag at the NFR and he would be really good to everybody and and, and everybody to get along with him. Well, good. I feel like he'd be fair. Yeah. Right, and if, was, and if you call somebody out, hey, I mean, he knows he's roped. He yeah. he ropes good. He's cross fired steers before. Okay, yeah. all right, I'll ride out of the arena because I he he's seen the right call. Yeah, right. is there any? Uh, Flaggers that you learn stuff from. I mean, Kevin Ristrom, he's had a... Ke- yeah, Kevin. I talk to... Like, if I have any questions about stuff, like, I talk to... I'll call Kevin yeah. and ask him. Cause Shut up, in, Kevin Ristrom. Yeah, in my opinion, sure. Kev- Kevin's the, the best, best of the best. Yeah. There you go. Like, yeah. what, what we, we need to yeah. kind of... I, I, I know if we get around some of the pro pro healers and pro headers yeah. they'll be like the same way we need to get somebody like y'all like involved yeah you got like and to help out because like like any given day you go to dynamite like you got well kevin don't flag as much anymore but you got his boy kai mm-hmm. redstrom that flags really good like yeah. there's so and then you go to rancho rio they got all their guys there like they got downtown there. they got crew there downtown as but well. then you got like because doesn't gucci flag a bunch at downtown yep. like yep. how are you gonna tell that guy difference <laughs> or not? like how are you exactly. gonna argue with him exactly like, he'll rope one quicker than anybody exactly. you can't argue with him exactly yeah. why we need somebody that I somebody like, like that like at the you know like you said at the end part like dude like you can't argue crossfire <laughs> like you know and that's the thing like flagging like the higher number ropes, like you usually don't have no problem because the guys know what they did like yeah. It's the l- lower number guys that like, yeah. they but, see it on TV and they think they could do it every time. Yeah. Man, it's very, very, very humbling to be a, to be a flagger and do a good job oh, with oh, it. Oh. Yeah. So are the You're judges, telling. are the judges uh, voted in? So like the bucket bulls at the finals, the horses, everything is kind of voted in, right? H- Harry Rose <laughs> usually flags the final. He's flagged the finals ever since, you know, I made it um, in 2006. And I think he still flags now. Where's he out of? But uh, I'm not sure where Harry's uh, originally out of, but, you know, he, he does team rope a little bit. He did cut his thumb off roping. But that that is, like, the only judge out there that has ever, like, that ropes at all and understands. Well, uh, like, you know, the how, game. How, how have they never talked to a guy in, like, Phil Amura doing it, or he just won't that, do it? That's, that's I, I brought up his name a lot because he's very fair. And yeah. I've like, seen him call guys out of the BFI, and then I've seen him guys, like, it was pretty close, and they gave it to him. And that's what I want. And I've talked to a couple, uh, couple. They they don't believe in that. They they don't really? believe in Ty going to the runner. If it looks close, they're gonna flag you out. So and, that's, and that's just hard because then it just gives them such bad like publicity. Because then like yeah. it's all like especially now it's all over it's social media. It's like, now, man. Like, These guys everybody. are throwing so fast. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's what we're talking about with the PRSA having like a re- instant replay because I that, feel like that, that gets the flagger or the judge off the hook. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to be the bad guy for the next two weeks and all that you shit. You know how many times like I'm flagging these ropes and like I'll flag somebody out for like yeah, and they'll bring something. the camera to you. They they bring their their, their phone camera, to their him. phone to me and I'm just like and he's trying to I'm, flag. I'm and not look watching. At his phone. It's like yeah, it's I seen what I seen. Like yeah. in a lot nine times out of ten when I do watch it, it's exactly what I seen. Yeah. yeah. But they all have it videoed and want to come show you. I couldn't believe it that he's over there trying to flag and these people are hey, look at my phone. He's not oh, looking yeah. at your fucking phone right now. <laughs> I'm to do this bullshit. Yeah. Your phone. I don't blame him. Yeah, it's and then like and then when I have a break, like sometimes I like if they're not absolute dicks, because a lot of the guys are dicks come chew my ass. <laughs> but if they're pretty cool about it, like when I get a break, like I'll look at it. Yeah. But like I said, nine times out of ten, it is exactly what I seen. Like yeah. Mm. Well, let's take a break right here and fill the cups up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get you another. Beer. We're back. We still got Dustin Hicks. He's uh, officially, unofficially sponsored by the original Curse. Curse. Banquets, not like That's right. That that that's the good stuff. So we were uh, talking kind of a little in in the break, and uh, I think it's rodeo story time, boys. Yeah. What do you think? Like it, Dustin. You had a horse uh, named Richard. Yeah. That horse back in Oklahoma. Yeah, who? Yeah, um, Richard Crater. He yeah. owned him, and uh, I bought him from here or from him. Got him back here. That's when I was with Jason Williams mm-hmm. and uh, did some horse trading. Well, uh, he was mine, but his head and heel horse. Jason had a pretty nice heel horse, so I was riding him. He was riding mine. Jason won a lot of money on him, and then uh, we ended up getting rid of him. He One thing led to another. Yeah, we sold him back to 
Sean. And he be that's my he point. Be, he be he he because uh, he are IRA rodeos. Yep. And he ended up winning the world and horse of the year on that horse when he mm. the horse was probably like eighteen, yeah. nineteen at the time. That was my getting to it. That's pretty cool. Huh? Yeah. No, cool little horse, yellow horse. He was when he was eighteen. He was still act like he was about three. And that wasn't that like, long ago, maybe four or five years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, the like horse he, uh, Eric rides. Is eighteen. Yeah. 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 And he was this, just telling us that. This horse was. What happened to Sherman? Sherman, he's in Texas somewhere. The last I heard, was like Jake was gonna buy him or something like that. No, he uh, actually. Uh, who ended up? Uh, Sean ended up with him, and then a guy that worked for Sean bought him. Yeah. Has been heading on him. He was a. Uh, I mean, that's what a horse. My like yeah, a head horse. That's like, what a horse should look like. He's stout, yeah. big. I mean, that that was, bro, that was a badass was, horse. I love flagging on that mm-hmm. horse. Like he was so broke. Mm-hmm. Nice to ride. He was fun to heal on. Fun to head on, I guess. I didn't head any on. Yeah. Jason liked him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that was so is Jason thing. still roping a bunch over where he's at? Yeah, that old timer. He had to get shoulder, shoulder surgery, and he's just back to roping now. He he's, just got well, done. He's building. had a lot of miles, and they weren't all on a paper. Yeah, and he uh, <laughs> he just got done building his arena. Yeah, right? yeah. He's so got he, his arena done. He's got some cattle up there, and yeah. he's been uh, – Back to open. He hangs out at Beaver's place. Beavers, he has yeah. a covered arena back there. And... Oh, not a covered arena, that place. Oh, it's not a covered arena? No. Oh, I thought it was covered. That's the nicest indoor arena I've ever been to in my life. Like a house. Oh, it's indoor arena. He has an indoor and an outdoor arena. But his indoor arena, that so much has an elevator, takes you up to the bar. Yeah. That overlooks the whole arena. This is uh, Brian Beaver. He's the one that yeah. bought uh, Trevor's horse yeah. and all that stuff. The ranch real I went up there and helped Jason do some stuff. Last year, about this time, for two weeks, we went over there every day and roped. I told Beaver, I said, man, you're lucky I don't mm-hmm. live here. You wouldn't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> they got a big old drop-down screen to watch football and oh, everything yeah. on where they're roping. I was like, man, I would While leave this place. While they're roping in the arena? Yeah, it's like drops down right in the middle of the arena. It's pro- it's huge. I can't even tell you how big it is, but it's a projector screen. They'll put the football games, basketball games, whatever's on. That's cool. That's cool. I would, uh, and that's in Oklahoma? Uh, Kansas. Oh, Kansas. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And Beaver, you have the inv- invitation to come on the pod. We'd like to hear your story. He's Oh, he's probably got some good ones. He's uh, he's made a lot of money in his life. Yeah. He's done and good. He bought, he bought Trevor's horse, yeah. right? That real high dollar one. Yeah. Two, yeah. 250, 250, I think. 250, 260. Yeah. And More than I'll ever see. Yeah. That was at Rancho Rio? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. A couple of years ago. Where's that guy live at? Doesn't he live here? He has a place uh, here, too. Yeah, he has a really nice place over there by okay. Dynamite. Yeah, and a jet. Yeah, and <laughs> his uh, like his place in Cave Creek's real nice here, but that's like slumming it when you get to his place in Kansas. It's it's yeah. a second home here. Cave Creek's a second. Yeah, home. it's he, like he pulled up to a dynamite in a Rolls Royce. Rolls. No, over at Rancho oh, Rio. Rancho Rio. We were over there, and he pulls up in a Rolls Royce. I guess that come from like Kevin, Kevin Hart. Hart or something. <laughs> he has his horses there saddled. His guys there got him saddled up and everything. He just eases yeah. on him, but he's, he's like, here we he's, go. He's a player. He, he, and he, he just likes to rope. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. just businessman. He sold so his company. Cool. He has he's jets. He's ate up with rope, and he loves it. It's like, pretty cool. He's a really cool dude. That's, if you want to have a good time, hang out with Beaver and Jason yeah. at the same well, time. Well, I mean, just, <laughs> just that name, right, just that Beaver. name in itself should tell you how good of a time that guy is, right? Yeah, yeah. They're cool people. Yeah, J- people. Jason's always been a good time, man. Yeah. I hung out with that guy since I was a kid. Right there, Kai, Bry, all those guys, David Howard, Daniel Howard. All those guys growing up right there in Levine, and man, they always had the nice arenas and everything, and everybody yeah. got a rope with them and stuff. Those, those are always cool dudes growing up. Yeah. These are, did you ever rope at Elmer's? Which one's on 35th, 35th and Bayside? It was Red. like a legend. You know, it was like one of those. I guess if it was still going on today, it would kind of be like a like a dynamite. It was one I of want, the ones. I want to say I did kind of. Uh, I want to say I went to it a few times when I was younger because I would hit up. Uh, I didn't even know if it was called Elmer's, but then I, you know, Di- this... Dynamite always had, you know, the yeah. reputation, it's, you know, on yeah. Dynamite Road, but yeah, yeah, there I, really I, was I, nothing out there except for Elmer's and a Circle K across. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. and was everybody it. had to run the Circle K and get beer. Yeah. Right, and it looked like the light poles were about ready to yeah. fall yeah. in yeah. the yeah. arena, and like the amount of NFR qualifiers, oh, world man. champs, and stuff like that place was on the map, you know, well, back yeah. in the day. Jason told me a story. He was over there roping one day, and uh, they're out there roping. And next thing you know, because you know how like it kind of dead end right there. Mm-hmm. Car just come flying over the road, boom, right in the arena. Yeah, I believe it. 
That was a good place, though. You could learn to head, heel, fist fight, mm -hmm. whatever you needed to do. If you, if you ask Big Jake, you could sit up in the tree and throw rocks at people. Oh, yeah. Jake, you <laughs> know what we're talking about. Yeah. Jake. You know what we're talking about, Jake. Big Jake. <laughs> oh, shit. Jake gets a lot of shout-outs. Yeah, I think does. we should have Jake on here. We, we are, and he's... He's, he's going to bell hay with me in the morning, but I, I, I've i been telling him, you're going, oh, no, I'm not. No, think, I'm not. Do you oh, think no. Jake will get stage fright? No, he will. He'll, yeah. he'll say he's going to do it until he gets right to that door. And, and he'll then he'll right. be like, he'll, st away. he'll stand right over there. <laughs> yeah. I'll just sit here and watch you guys. Oh, yeah. That, that, guy, giant. that guy knows a lot about bucking bulls. No, he does. Oh. And, and I do got to give Jake that credit. He has done his homework. I mean, that's, he lives, sleep. I mean, that's what he used to do, you know. Yeah. And, and he does, and he knows a lot of people. Like, oh, he like does. He, he bullshits a lot. Don't get me wrong, but that guy does know his shit. And oh, he wants to sleep with them cattle. He wants oh, to rub yeah. the shit on his face. Oh, yeah. He wants to be right <laughs> in the middle of it. You know, he loves oh. it. Yeah, when we were hauling them bulls, man, you could call and say, "Hey, man, we're looking at this bull, and this is how it's racing." Well, that one kind of goes back to this and that, and that. Nah, man, mm. ain't gonna be able to haul him much yeah. down the road. And I'll be damned if Jake yeah. wasn't right. I mean, oh, because yeah. it, it it takes some breeding to be able to pack them suckers up and down the road, and and Jake. Jake, Jake's a bull man. Yeah, for he sure. is. He hey. knows all that little uh, sayings, you know, kick the lights out. Ooh. Oh, yeah. You know, lick his own ass. You know, I've heard, I've learned them all, you know. Yeah. Whip him hey. to the pay window. Hey. <laughs> Remember when we go over to Jake's house over here to buck them bulls? Uh-huh. You guys come pick me up. Jake's like, bring a horse with you in case one gets out. I said, Jake, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah. Like, we're in a neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, it's so tight quarters there. We couldn't even get the horse out of the trailer. So me and Brandon just sit there and watch. It was Jake. Shit, he Jake. just right in the middle of it. I'm like, <laughs> he's he pulling the game. <laughs> yeah. He's doing it all. Yeah. <laughs> Jake's a good He's dude. doing real good right now. He uh, got some a semi now. And, man, he's. Oh, shit. I passed him today. Yeah. Did no, Sandman. Sandman, sand yes, oh, yeah. sir. Did he give you the roll? Oh, he didn't know it was me. Oh, and, uh, he's, I'm, I'm real proud of Jake. He, he's come a long ways in a, a short period of time. You know, he's he's kind of timid a little bit. He's, you would never think that he's the biggest guy in the room, but he, he kind of, you know. Teddy bear. Yeah, he, he's super timid around people he don't know. Correct. He, he's kind of like a, like a younger, like a kid, right? Yeah. When you meet him. Like when I first met Maverick, um, uh, he's, you know, Maverick's probably four years old. He's Goo's son. And shout out to Goo, that's our uh, social media director. Goo. Goo. And, uh, you know, he's real standoffish. And that kind of reminds me of how Jake is, right? Yeah. But then once you got to know Maverick, boy, you can't stop yeah. him talking. So Jake's the same way, yeah. right? So once you. I bet Maverick don't tell you. I just got to do everything myself. <laughs> got to do it all. No, oh, you need to meet Maverick. <laughs> you know, but, but like, Jake, he's the same way. Like, but once you get to know him, man, that's the guy you can call yes. to in the morning. Yes, hey, sir. Jake, man, I'm broke down, yep. and I'm in. Oh, yeah. I was on this way to uh, Eric Rogers' deal in Round Rock, and I need a tire. Yep. Okay, I'm on my way. Yep. 100%. You know, I'll say one thing. You, you know, Loyalty and friendship. Jake, if he's your friend, he's loyal, and mm -hmm. he's your friend. And you know, when he's hauling this hay and stuff, and, and he was real nervous about getting on scales and not going to these places. And I said, Jake, just just do it. Like, you're just going to figure it out just like everybody else said. Just do it. And he thanked me the other day. He's like, man, thank you for, like, me and Chad, you know, for pushing him. And, and now he's he's a, he's a pro now, and he'll let you know, too. Hey, so. Brandon, can we tell a story about Jake? Uh, which one? You can. The one right here. Which one? Right out here by the arena, by the ditch. <laughs> Oh, he got mad at me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, had, we were coming here at Rope Steers. Oh, me yeah. and Jason. <laughs> he mad. Him and Brandon get into it. <laughs> we get here, right? The steers are up, but Jake always, like, works the shoot and stuff, like, helps out. Like, where's Jake at? Well, <laughs> me and Jake got into it. They got so mad, Jake had his KB Farms jacket on. Threw it on the ground. <laughs> <and took off. laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Me and Jake are like, go pick him up. Yeah. We're, we're, you know, you work with somebody like that all the time. We're brothers. I mean, it happens. So it's, it was all good. But me and Jason had to talk him off the ledge. He's mm -hmm. like, foot, foot blender. Yeah. <laughs> He got a little fired up. Jake does get a little fired up too. Uh, and when that big old sucker gets yeah. fired up, he's he's easy to talk out of it though. He starts breathing hard yeah, and he yeah, starts yeah. getting red and red and red. Kind of pat him on the back, yeah. Jake. It's all right, but it's all right. <laughs> he he just got him a brand new pickup. Oh, and, and this thing is truck. And it's a King Ranch. I mean the top of the line. I said, what kind of truck do you get? Just imagine the nicest truck on the road. That's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I got. Yeah, I that's what he said. Truck on the road. <laughs> Well, good for him, but man, no. you, you do see guys like that, and they've worked for a long time. Again, I've known Jake. He lived 
a mile away from my house growing up. You know, I've known Jake his whole life and his sister and his parents. His parents are great, great people. Yeah, shout out Steve. Yeah, Donna. Good people. And uh, his sister's good. Uh, they're all good people. And uh, to see somebody work and put in the work and stay steady at it so he can tell you. Yeah. Imagine the nicest truck on the road. Yeah. Like, oh, That's pretty freaking cool, no, right? He, he was my right-hand man when we doing those cattle. I mean, Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. No, he did put it in. He he, he was he helped me a bunch. For bad sure. fella at you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's gonna happen, that's gonna happen on yeah. these bigger outfits. That's what he said. It happened on them big jobs. Happened on, on the big, big jobs. jobs. Yeah, yeah, that's how it's gonna happen. So, what what else is going on? What's on the horizon? Are you you heading the judging school for the PRCA? Yeah, I think I'm gonna figure out how to judge Bronx and Bulls. There really? you go. <laughs> no, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll no. sponsor you. We'll have our own judge in there. Yeah, that's how I'll do it all. Yeah. No, I just same thing. Just keep working and flagging, helping out where I can. You going to Kansas this summer to hang out? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I guess uh, Jason and Beaver, they're talking about having a roping for Beaver's Roping in September. I'm supposed to go flag yeah. that. This is the second. They had it last year, huh? I don't, yeah, I think they yeah. did. Yeah. Beaver yep. Bash or something. Yeah, they. they That's a great name. Yeah. They uh, don't take no money out, add a bunch of money. and. Well, they ought to. Yeah, yeah, they should, and then they give away a bunch of prizes, and mm-hmm. it's sometime middle of September, I think. Yeah. I think I'm supposed to go out there and go flag that one. But then That's cool. I don't know. They uh, had called me about going Texas, maybe next week or two to go flag her open, but mm-hmm. I ain't heard much left about that. So yeah, probably not. So what's uh, what about you? I mean, uh, so you got some big big plans coming up, huh? Oh gosh, damn! Yeah, Randy, we were you supposed to bring, bring that up. up. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's hear it. Uh. Someone got on a knee, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm engaged, getting She's, married. And let me next tell you, June. she deserves everything she gets putting up with old Dustin Hicks. Let me oh, quote man. Whoa, I, I say same thing about your old lady. <laughs> I can tell you a Dustin Hicks story. I go down to the bar at Flagstaff Hotel after he was up there flagging a rope, and we walked down to the bar. I said, oh, can I have a Coors Light? They said, we don't have any. I said, what? No, I? no Coors Light? No, we're all out. I said, how'd you run out of Coors Light? Point. I'm <laughs> sitting in the corner. <laughs> AOP was down there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I have a pyramid stacked up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I said, well, at least they're my buddies. I don't know. I can't get them out. <laughs> I got one for Brandon Shelton. He, uh, the bar out there in Arlington, he want to have somewhere open, so he calls me and Jason. Yeah, we'll, we'll come out there and check it out. And at the time, my pickup, like, I didn't have no tags on it. Like, they are like a year expired. But we had this 32-foot cow trailer. It never got unhooked from that, so who cares? Yeah. So we drive that all the way to Arlington. We get there. We check things out. Brand tells me and Jason, he's like, man, everything's on me. Just eat, have beers. Go. You done fucked up. <laughs> hey, and Jason got so drunk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was but, a but, but you said. They <laughs> kept calling me. Are you? They're still on you? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're at shift change. They're still on you? I said, yeah, that's my buddies. They're still on me. You sure? It doesn't. I need a steak sandwich to go. Yeah. <laughs> Jason says, he's like, next one, he's like, man, we might need to put some new tires on the right side of that trailer. We're in the gravel quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we know that these stories could probably go on all night long, but... Uh, Let's uh let's say thanks to Dustin. Yeah, Dustin, I appreciate we, thank you all. Yeah. Appreciate being on. Yeah, we, we really do speak highly of you on the flagging game, and everybody that comes on here speaks highly of you in the flagging game. So you need to be pretty proud of that, I think. Yeah. And uh, and all them guys out there that you know, you, sometimes Ty goes around, but sometimes Ty goes the flagger too. I mean, give this guy the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes, and the thing you know about I mean? it, like what you're saying, like it don't it don't make me no more or less money who mm-hmm. wins or who loses like yeah. i'm not there to try to make yet. you lose for it's sure just, it's just call the it right is shot what it is. Yeah. And, and put yourself in dustin's shoes you know it's, it's a stressful ass job you, see, uh, but, you know you know at times i, I tell it. them guys like here's the flag yeah, hey, go, <laughs> yeah. i'll go home yeah, yeah. So. all right well cool. hey, catch us right. on the next yeah. one thank, thank you, you so much, appreciate guys. it thank, thank you guys, guys.